You know, the need for sexual purity is massive. But you know what? We have preached sexual purity like a list of rules, like save yourself and you'll be good. You know, we are actually in a sexual nightmare. And when my children had nightmares when they were young and they came into my room, I didn't give them a list of rules. I gave them a dream. We need to have a dream set before us of why we want to walk in purity, why it's so important. But we also have to be very careful because, you know, there's a lot of Christian young men and girls that are like, oh, technically I'm a virgin, but they're not pure. They're not pure. They've done everything but it. He wants to have you holy unto him. Holy doesn't mean to be good. Holy means to be God's. We need a generation that is empowered to live the dream of God, that God actually is intimately involved in their sexuality, that God is intimately involved in their purpose, that God is intimately involved in their marriage, their lives, their hopes, their dreams, that He holds their life in their hands. I was very sexually broken. And when I became a Christian, man, that just broke my heart. But you know what? God began to speak His promises over me and said, you know what? You need to position your children better. And, and my sons have. And my, my oldest son, when he got married, he was a virgin. But you know what he told me? He said, my mom was a virgin, but I was judgmental towards the other people that weren't. And God told me that my pride was just as important to Him. And so He said, I really had to repent and say, you know what? You're the one that's kept me. I didn't keep myself. So only God can keep us. And if you're broken, God will, God will wash away that defilement. God will bring that healing, but you have to remove the judgment and the condemnation and the shame first. And let them know God's going to wash away that and make them whole again.